Uh, well, of course, I wasn't aware. I mean, I knew that it was a federal operation, obviously, uh, but I wasn't aware of uh, Eric Holder's interest in this. And uh, I am not uh, done any homework on that and really uh, have no personal knowledge of Eric Holder's interest in the Oklahoma City bombing. What we have, Alex, we got to cover the Jamie Gorelick, of course, her signature's on the 9-11 Commission report, and she's on the, the group photo in, on the inside uh, jacket cover of that book. She was actually um, serving under the Justice Department, number two under Janet Reno. Eric Holder served in a lateral position at Jamie Gorelick. So you see these people rear their ugly heads, so to speak, on a judicial level. They're coming back in time and time again because they know they got literally got away with murder. It was Jamie Gorelick that we found out was actually barking the marching orders out to the Oklahoma uh, DA's office within days after the bombing on speakerphone yelling at the top of her lungs telling how the DA was going to investigate this case who they were going after who they were going to ignore and that was it there was no no uh, basically now why uh, do we even have courts but well, I mean I mean the, the the lawsuits that Jesse Trinity and others have filed they've, they've gotten the emails from Holder where he's in control of the cover-up and he's saying things like this is our number one priority in the Justice Department this is D-Day Cover this up, that just was, like Fast and Furious. Just that was uh, Kenny Trinidad's murder, and we have the internal documents. You've seen them. Uh, Jesse has, has sent them uh, PDF. Internal emails from Holder's uh, top lieutenants and his, his underlings, his legal assistants, everybody was on the same page as far as how that investigation was going. And Jesse uh, basically sent, I believe, an eight-page letter to Patrick Leahy, who was in charge of the Senate subcommittee that was in charge of the hearings to uh, basically approve Holder's appro uh, appointment. And Leahy refused to, re to respond to uh, Jesse Trenadu. And the fact that he, he had that letter, all of the facts were laid out. It's like Jesse was completely ignored. Uh, what about what about Larry Potts, uh, the, the, the head, the, the deputy FBI director? He, he said that he was in Dallas, and then he he claimed that he flew Southwest Airlines there. Uh, World and Alien others uh, broke this, uh, but it was also in some local papers I know. And then it turned out because of storms that day, those flights didn't exist. And then the receipts came up that he was there the day before, and of course that's what witnesses had said they'd seen. I mean that's that's a pretty big deal right there. Uh, you guys got any comments on that? I'm reading a memo, actually, that was uh, put out by a colleague of ours that helped us with the film early on. Uh, Danny Colson was the uh, the FBI agent. Uh, very peculiar situation there. I got to talk to... Okay, uh, then how was Larry Potts tied Because I'm going from memory here. Uh, this, this is amazing. Um, I, I actually uh, was in the archives in Austin uh, working with Wendy Painting on, on looking at a lot of the defense team papers. Larry Potts was actually best friends with Eric Holder. And there's an article in the Dallas Morning News we stumbled across going through all of these boxes of papers. Larry, uh, actually, uh, Eric Holder recused himself from prosecuting the Ruby Ridge case because Larry Potts was one of the, the t chief lieutenants in there. Since they were best friends, Holder, uh, one of his few uh, instances of having some ethics, had to recuse himself from that. These guys knew each other from way back. It was Larry Potts that ended up calling the shots, according to Terry Nichols, for um, Tim McVeigh. And McVeigh was upset because Potts took him off script. He changed the plans completely within a few hours before the bombing happened. Exactly. I've forgotten more about this than most people will ever learn. But I've, I've seen the copies of the hotel receipts. The government's had to admit that that was the case. So it was Coulson who we have the receipts from that, what, Marriott. And then it's Larry Potts and the affidavits and, and the other witnesses yes, sir. Uh, who's there running the operation. Correct. These people, man, blowing up daycare centers. I mean, they're just absolute demons. What is it like for you, Hoppy, just continuing to know this and watching these people walking around? Well, it's been so long and I'm getting so old that uh, there's not much shock value anymore. Uh, I understand everything that I need to understand. I know who's who and who does what for whom. Therefore, there's not much new under the sun that I could learn that would uh, worry me. Uh, of course, anybody would be worried about what's going on, but I know exactly what's going on in the world today and who's in charge of uh, trying to get it to happen. Uh, but because I'm a Christian, I would know that uh, they're going to have a problem. Uh, they can't get everything done. They won't done unless God lets them. 
and I'm not sure he's going to allow all of the bad things they've got planned to happen. So, <coughs> excuse me, that's really uh, my, uh, that's kind of where I'm, I'm backed up to the wall, and uh, I'm done about all I can done uh, do, and I've got to leave it up to these younger men, and just leave it up to God to take care of it, and I'm just kind of retiring. Well, that's what I've heard. I heard a lot of people that are in a noble lie that this is this is time to ride off in the sunset. Well, it's uh, it's my time. Uh, I've just been diagnosed with something nobody wants to have, and uh, I plan to beat it. But nevertheless, I will be occupied with that for the next few months, and and won't have any time to. Uh, I'm glad we're getting this done because uh, I don't know how many more opportunities we might have. Well, it'll be commercial free tonight on the news, and Aaron Dykes is doing it, so you'll have the complete floor for 30 minutes an hour, as long as you guys want. I don't want to exhaust you. I didn't know this, Hoppy, that you have uh, have something that, that uh, nobody wants to get, but we'll all certainly pray for you. What, have you been diagnosed with cancer? Uh, I don't. I believe that words are very powerful, and therefore I hesitate to put certain things in words. No, I hear you. I hear you. Well, we'll all pray for you, my friend. Now, now you wanted to get into the bombs itself, which is really at the heart of the issue. And General Parton, who came immediately when he saw it on the news, columns at the back blown out with blast points, the, the, the columns right up by the truck not damaged. I mean, that's... And then the, the newscast saying bombs are being removed. Uh, wow. Uh, so, so break that down. Well, this is the one thing that I needed to blow this thing wide open. If I could have got a hold of, if I could have gotten General Parton, I knew I wanted structural engineers. I wanted to know how strong these columns were designed. How much pounds per square inch of pressure could they survive? I didn't know that. I couldn't know that without calling the, the engineers and the builders and everything of the building itself. Uh, I learned later that the columns were designed to withstand 3,500 pounds per square inch of pressure. I learned later from General Parton that you can calculate how fast blast pressure decreases by dividing it by the distance cubed. So it's real short. Let's say for argument's sake that the uh, closest column to the truck was 10 feet away. Now, it's easy to say, and the government said that the uh, ammonium nitrate bomb that was set off, which we don't necessarily believe, but anyway, they claim it generated 500,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. Well, 500,000 pounds is certainly enough to blow away a 3,500-pound design column. The problem is the distance. When you cube the distance and divide that into the pounds per square inch, here's what we get. We got 500,000 over the distance 10 feet cubed. 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 100 is 1,000. You got 500,000 over 1,000. You divide 1,000 into 500,000. You got 500. Now we got a whole different ball game. Now we got a 3,500 pound column. And we only got 500 pounds of pressure. So that proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was physically impossible for any truck bomb, assuming it had ammonium nitrate in it, any bomb that the government said it was impossible for it to blow down even one column, much less go all the way east down the front of the building and then turn and go into the building and take out all those columns down on the east end. So what happened was physically impossible. What McVeigh was convicted of is physically impossible. Uh, all of that I could have proven if I had had the right uh, witnesses. And As a grand juror, and, and expanding on that, I'm going from memory on this because uh, I don't go off notes. I go off memory, and I didn't want to use to be. But uh, did, wasn't it Controlled Demolition Incorporated that, that that blew up the majority of the building that was left? They wouldn't let anybody get in and look at it. And uh, then on top of that, mm. they then buried it in a whacking hut landfill and poured concrete in with the chunks. But I, uh, all and then of course it was Controlled Demolition Incorporated that helped uh, do the work at uh, at the 9/11 site. 
Um, is that correct from my memory, uh, Hoppy? Uh, you may. Uh, yeah, we have Chris may know that. I don't know. Yeah, we, have, we have photos of uh, CDI employees with their T-shirts at the, the bomb site uh, within about three days before it was demolished. Oddly enough, it was the same day that James Nichols was released from federal custody in Detroit, and uh, he was held up there on purpose for 30 days, so he wouldn't get out and support efforts such as Hoppy. And uh, the day he, in fact, he called me before Terry's uh, state trial and said, the morning I got out of, of federal custody in downtown Detroit at the federal courthouse was the morning uh, that they blew up the Murr building. And he was really upset because he wanted to be down there to find out the truth. We should talk about that when we come back. I mean, we know from the witnesses and, and, and documents that have come out, we pretty much know how they did this. And it's just horrible. And, and, and of course, the motive. But I want to get from Hoppy again, the, the, the motive uh, also from Chris Emery. But. Folks, it's creepy having to go on air and talk about government people, uh, who, who, who many of them are still in government, in fact, even more powerful, uh, and, and have to talk about them. But you know what? You know what? They killed those kids. And if they can kill those kids and get away with it, they can kill anybody's kids. we got to bring them to justice. We're only going to do that standing up to them. This is a decision you've got to make. And if you think this is all there is in the world and it's all about TV dinners and beer and football games, and you know what? So what about those kids getting blown up? And forget what the witnesses inside said and the survivors. You want to just own the lie, take the great delusion and say, oh, we're a bunch of kooks? You make your decision then. You make your decision. You be with the timid cowards and the people that go along with it. I mean, I understand the military mind that did this. It's a gambit. That's a 3,000-year-old chess move from um, eastern, uh, what is Persia today. You sacrifice a pawn in an early move to manipulate your enemy into a larger stratagem to where you can defeat them. And it's the old thing of send in 100 cavalry to draw out the larger army. They'll all be killed, but you're going you're gonna to save 10,000 of your troops in that move by killing 100. But those are men that signed up to go and, 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 and die. And it still really should not be part of the laws of war. Because once you do that, well, it's collateral damage. Yeah, we'll kill a million Iraqis for their oil. Why not kill the little children in that daycare center and make sure that bomb was parked right there and have their camera people ready to get those shots when the heroes go in to save the kids and the, and the murderers sit outside and even set up their own federal Patsy McVeigh. Gentlemen, I'm going to shut up. I want to get into McVeigh, how this ran, the affidavits by Nichols, what we know, the individuals orchestrating this, who they plan to blame it on. And, of course, thank God some of the bombs didn't go off because then their plan didn't go according to, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the best laid plans of mice and men often uh, go astray. But, I mean, other points you want to make, or, or speaking to why you've gone public, Chris Emery, I mean, you learned about Oklahoma City and, 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 and have fought it and risked your life. Hoppy was in the middle of it and, and ran smack dab into the New World Order. But I think that's a good place here. Hoppy, why have you done what you've done versus other people? You know, we would call you exceptional. I know you would just say you're a decent person who does what's right. And, and, and what's led you to do this, Chris? And have you had any threats? Because I know you've talked to police officers and others that have been threatened. Go ahead, Uppy. Well, I, you know, I just don't understand. <clears throat> I guess I'm just <clears throat> built different. But I don't understand people just looking the other way when something bad happens. I just don't understand that. I mean, <clears throat> I wouldn't allow a child to be killed. If I was in the area and I saw a guy attacking a woman or a child, I wouldn't have to know who they were to try to defend them. I mean, that's just something men do. Uh, <clears throat> I don't understand. All of my fellow members of the grand jury, I, most of them did not have sufficient background information or intelligence to be on that jury. And that's a different story. But even the ones that did, and there had to be somebody else on there smart enough to know what's going on, but they didn't dare stick their head up from behind the log and I just don't understand that <clears throat> because you know there's a little saying that's just simple as it can be you know that I've heard all my life uh, all it takes for evil to triumph is for the good people to do nothing I mean that's a simple little saying but it's just as true as it can be and if if people will stand up and say hey I'm not gonna put up with that 
then maybe somebody else will stand up. And you did, and pretty soon, if you could get everybody to stand up, you could make it work. But <clears throat> there, there are just too many people out there that I, I don't know whether it's a lack of education, a lack of genes, genetic structure, a lack of intelligence or what, but I don't understand people that won't stand up for what's not right. Well, it's mind right. control. It, it, it's the television.